Hi, Calvary. Amber here with your word for the day. And today we're looking at Psalm 78, and it's titled, Tell the Coming Generation. And it's this beautiful psalm um, that starts with this commandment to tell the coming generation of God and his wonderful deeds. And then it goes on to talk and do what it commands and tells of all the wonderful things that God has done in Israel's history. Um, and so I would encourage you guys to read that today because um, we're going to just look at the first eight verses right now. But it's really cool to see how God has worked in Israel um, history. So in verse one, it says, Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings from of old, things that we have heard and known, that our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their children, but tell to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might and the wonders that he has done. He established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers to teach to their children, that the next generation might know them, the children yet unborn, and arise and tell them to their children, so that they should set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments, and that they should not be like their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation whose heart was not steadfast, whose spirit was not faithful to God. And so we can see through this passage that there is such importance and significance in telling the next generation about God and teaching them who he is. And I want to point out that this was addressing the whole people of Israel. So this is not just for parents. This is for everyone. And of course, if you are a parent, then you do have a responsibility given by God to invest in your children spiritually. But this is for everyone. Um, this is everyone's responsibility to tell the next generation about God and who he is and the wonderful things that he has done. And so maybe you don't have children or your children are grown up and you're wondering, how can I do this? Well, we have whole ministries dedicated to teaching children and youth about who God is and that God loves them. And so you can serve and volunteer in teaching children about God or mentoring youth and investing in their lives. Or maybe you want to invest in a young adult and mentor them. Or maybe you wanna mentor a young mom or dad. But no matter what age that we're at, there's always someone that is younger than us that we can invest in and tell about how wonderful God is to us. And so, there's such a spiritual need for us to listen to this call that God has given to us and to teach about who God is and, and what he wants for our life. Because if we aren't willing to go and invest in the next generation and tell them about God and how wonderful he is, the world definitely is going to tell them about what the world is about. And so if we want the next generation to know who God is and for them to follow him, then we need to be willing to go and tell them about God and how he works and how mighty he is and that he loves them. And see, when we stop and think about it, someone took the time to invest in us spiritually and tell us about God and the fact that he loved them. And it changed our life. And so we can have that impact on someone else as well if we take the time to stop and tell them about God and his love and how he works in mighty ways. And so you can have that impact on someone's life if you want to, if you take that step. And we are also called to teach about God and his wonderful deeds to the next generation so that they can have hope in God and they can follow him faithfully and not be a rebellious generation. See, there was this cycle in Israel's history of one generation would follow God and then the next generation would be rebellious, typically for about 40 years, like a whole generation. And then it would take them that long to realize they needed to repent and turn to God. And then the next generation would follow God for about 40 years or so. And then it was this ongoing cycle and it's because the generations weren't telling the next generation about who God is and how wonderful and mighty he had worked in their lives. And so we can see it's important so that the next generation can be faithful to God and put their hope in him and not in this world. And so 
when we stop and look around, if we don't like where our country is going, or maybe we don't like how the next generation acts, instead of complaining or ignoring those people, we can do what God has called us to do, and then we can love and serve them and invest in them spiritually and tell them about God and who He is and how wonderful and mighty He is and the fact that God loves them. And so I just want to give some practical things that all of us can do if we want to live this out in our life. First of all, parents, you have a responsibility given by God to teach your children about who God is and and what he wants for their life. And so make God the most important thing in your life and in your family's life and, and show that to your kids by your actions of how you live your life, fully devoted to God and faithful to him. Um, and teach them, talk about God in every aspect of your life, in everything that you're doing. Teach them to read the Bible. Don't wait until they're teenagers. Start it young so they can grow up and have that foundation of faith. And I have a lot of parents say, well, my kids ask me questions about the Bible or about God that I don't know. Good. It's a good thing your kids are asking difficult questions. It means they want to understand and know more about God. Um, and so if you don't know the question, then just be honest with your kids and say, I don't know that, but we're going to find the answer together and go to the Bible and read it together. And maybe you don't understand or, or can't figure out the answer to their question. That's okay. Go and ask someone else. Maybe it's a friend or maybe it's someone in your life group or Bible study um, or a pastor. Go and just find the answers and help your kids develop their faith. Grandparents, you get the chance to invest in your grandkids spiritually, but just because your kids are grown up doesn't mean that you stop investing in them and telling them about who, good, how good God is. And, and maybe you didn't follow Jesus when your kids were younger and they're grown up now. You can still take the time to talk about how God has changed your life and he is good and mighty and working. And then for everyone, if you can sit and talk, and you love Jesus, and you like people, then you can do this and invest in the next generation. And so today, I hope this encourages you to take the next step of faith in following Jesus, and I hope that you have a great day. Bye.